Number one, the message of the National Federation for the Unification of North and South. Number one, introduction. My dear countrymen who are patriotic and who are wishing for unification. Today, we are here attending an event that every Korean deeply longs for, the inauguration of the National Federation movement for the unification of North and South. We are the Korean people. We are brothers of this world. We are a single people. We have the history of 5,000 everlasting years, a brilliant culture and tradition. and an excellent language and we use these things for love and peace. We are of the same form, same destiny. We have inherited the same blood lineage and have the same beautiful nature. However, this is already the 42nd year of the historical division of North and South, something that no one welcomed, not even nature decided. The great and joyful independence which was paid by the blood of sincere patriots 40 years ago was lost instantly and so miserably amidst their suffering the division of our people and the emergence of North and South occurred. How long will the miserable tragedy of our people continue? Should we abandon the hope of unifying the fatherland, of unifying our people, since there seems to be no sign of unifying North and South May 15, 1987, at the Little Angels Art Hall, Seoul, Korea. Number two, the reason to organize the National Federation. My fellow countrymen, here today, I am proclaiming that the unification of our fatherland will be achieved absolutely and that the time is imminent. Today we are here to kindle this disposition by establishing the national foundation for the unification of North and South. Ever since 1945 we have sought how we can brightly achieve the restoration of our homeland, the independence and the clear restoration of our great homeland this century has or was accomplished by two factors. One is the movement for the independence by patriots inside Korea and abroad who for 36 years had shed their blood in defiance of Japanese imperialism. The other factor is the defeat of Japanese imperialism at the end of World War II, which brought world peace. Suddenly, because of these two factors, our homeland was established. In a similar fashion, we're now on page 356, 
the unification of North and South will be accomplished. The corruption in the communist world centered on the USSR, which lasted for almost 70 years, is drawing near its end. Its 70-year history of failure has not hidden the fact that it is a farce and a deception. The decline of the communist ideology is connected with the fate of Kim Il-sung in North Korea. And this will be the element that will influence the unification of North and South worldwide. Because of the changes in the world situation, we need to have faith. We need a movement inside our nation and abroad that will work for the unification of North and South. We must burn with the fire of wishing uh, for our unification. There is an old Korean proverb where there is a will, there is a way. Also another wise Korean maxim, sincerity reaches to heaven. How can we desire unification without wishing and being determined more than heaven and earth, more than Korea? We must be burning with a desire for unification. This is the reason why we are here today to establish the National Federation Movement for the Unification of North and South. Number three, the 38th parallel. Today, first of all, we need to realize that the 38th parallel is not just a geography, geographical division, but that of the 38th parallel is a resentful dividing line of blood lineage and of ideologies that are contrary to each other. During the Korean War, we killed one another while belonging to the same people. It was not that we did not know that we were not of different people, not of different blood lineage. This happened due to the different differing views of value that could not meet halfway. This severed our nation's ties and blood lineage. This then became a terrible, fearful wall that separated relations between father and son. Number four, confrontation of theism and atheism. So what is the basic difference between these viewpoints of value that are against each other? The basic confrontation of these values that is similar to the confrontation centered on the third aid parallel is the confrontation between theism and atheism. First of all, the communist ideology starts with the absolute denial of God's existence. Since God is non-existent, the concept of absolute value and the standard of good and evil are also non-existent. Therefore, in the principle of communist revolution, achievement of its purpose is justified by any means. Through science, communism denied the existence of God. Also, they believe that the development of science prescribed the existence of communism and that God and religion are just some form of superstition or myth. 
after communism declared that religion is the opiate of the masses, did 20th century science deny God and religion as myths? No, it didn't. Though communism is proud of science, even 20th century science itself started to prove the existence of God and conquered over the 19th century notion that God is only superstition. We're now on 3, 5, 7. Let us look at one example. Based on the 19th century science, dialectical materialism, which declares that material was original in the cosmos, states that the cosmos is absolute and cannot further divide. But in the 20th century, new physics is overturning this view of the cosmos. This is because it was proven as an undeniable truth that the material produced by energy, which is invisible, is transforming and has reciprocity. This new physics, which is leading the 20th century, is affirming that the formation of the universe was not established without some form of will uh, present in the cosmos. And so scientific circles or principles it is also making clear that the existence of the first cause in the universe was not itself an accidental product originating from the cosmos. Science is asserting that man and the cosmos were created by a causal being, which in religion we call God. This being has intellect, emotion, and will, and the creation of man is an expression of his personality. His purpose of creation is to receive joy from man and to give love to man who resembles him. Therefore, to say that God is not existing is similar to stating that children have no parents. The view of family, which recognizes the Creator and the relationship man has with him will harmonize all the different groups in human society. Communism, which tried to erase God from this earth, became exposed as falsehood by the science that communists so strongly believed in. It has been exposed that the communist view of value must be eradicated from this world. Number five, communism mistaken view of man. Communism treats man as some higher form of animal and like some physical material similar to a machine. This is their proper conclusion since communism denies the existence of God. Communism declares that man evolved from the apes and reason and language develop as tools for production. Since production is treated as a god, then they then assert that man is only some higher form of animal. Since this communist view of man is the basic problem, it leads to terrible consequences for man. When man is just higher form of animal, man has no reason to assert his rights. When man degenerates to the level of a machine, man has no foundation to aspire for freedom, love, and creativity. In this communist society, man is just a short distance away from violence. Naturally, man only has 
human value when he is coincident with the purpose of communism. Only at that time, at any other time, man has no persistent value. This is the reason that in the communist world, man is treated insignificantly like an insect. During the 60 years of the communist regime in Russia, the French magazine Rio Figaro, November 18, 1978 edition, exposed the finding that at least 150 million humans who were against communism were exterminated. This is the result of the communist value of man. This is very evident. Now we're on page 358. We're in Oliver. Should we continue? There's one topic and a long topic, number seven. Hello? Okay, number six on 358. This is a short topic. The true view of man, man's divinity and human life, originated from man being the child of God, his creator. Man's human value comes from having the same divine nature as God's. If anyone harms another, it is similar to harming God. If a man loves another, it is the same as loving God. Each human is created by God as a true individual entity, being the subsequent substantial expression of God, man's life is as eternal as God's. The worst crime of communism was not just the denial of God, but with the treatment of man as an animal. Communism considers man as a higher form of animal and as a living matter similar to a machine. Thus, the structure of the communist system denies man his dignity. The confrontation of these two views of value, which are contrary to each other, does not occur exclusively in the Korean Peninsula, but presently occurs in every place in the world. This is now the era of the battle of the views of value of North and South on a global level. Without resolving the confrontation of the views of value, the unification of North and South will fade like an illusion. Furthermore, without finding a solution to Korea, we, must, we cannot offer a solution to the problem of the world. The same formula that will solve the problem of Korea can solve the problem of the world. Reverend Oliver, should I continue? Okay, number seven, view of value through Godism. Ladies and gentlemen, the solution to the inaccurate attitude towards the view of value is to advocate Godism. Godism is the ideology of liberation from materialism, from worldly humanism. In explaining the existence of God, and sanctity of human life, the communist world and the western civilization which are declining can be liberated. With this ideology we can liberate and save North 
Korea. The reason for this movement of unification of North and South is to begin the establishment of this view of value. Only unification with freedom is true freedom. When we see first the confrontation of the views of value which are against each other, we should be deeply impressed that only unification in freedom is true unification. Our unification must be the base for God, freedom, and democracy. Any other kind of unification is not true unification. The rights and privileges of our North Korean brothers have been plundered for 42 years. Like us, they also desire to enjoy freedom. This is true unification. We have to learn an important lesson from Vietnam. Vietnam was not unified. It became the slave of Russia. It did not achieve true unification. During 12 years of communism in Vietnam, people who wanted to pursue freedom became both people. A couple of hundreds of thousands and many died in the ocean. Another couple million people were massacred. Communist Vietnam, which was called unified, deteriorated to become the worst and poorest nation in the world, having a GNP of not even a hundred dollars. No one would label this is a true unification. Our North Korean brothers need a true revolution, the revolution that they have waited patiently for, for is only possible when we stand and lead to bring them world peace and prosperity. For us South Koreans who have lived a prosperous life, this is our sacred duty towards our North Korean brothers. For 40 years till now, the only policy of unification that the Communist Party in North America has had is one of polarization and they have been ceaselessly waiting for the realization of this opportunity. Their final goal of revolution is that South Korea should be liberated from the occupation of American imperialism and be made a unified fatherland where the South Korean people will have the same ideology as the North Korean people. To make the South Korean people believe in the same ideology, in other words, to arm them with Kim Il-sung's unique thought means to absolutely obey and be occupied under the doctrine of Kim Il-sung's father-son. It means being a slave to Kim Il-sung. Using these bitter experiences of defeat in the Korean War, North Korea has been ceaselessly attempting for more than 30 years to invade South Korea with the pretext of liberating the oppressed people of South Korea. Therefore, this present time is very precarious. Even though the tension between North and South Korea is at a high level, South Korea has earned worldwide admiration for its financial and economic development and has improved its international stature. Indeed, based on the 1985 GNP, the Gross National Product, the difference between South Korea and North Korea is respectively 5.5 against 1. 
and South Korea has evidently achieved a record of attaining 20th place as a developed country and 12th place as a world trading partner. After the 1988 Seoul Olympics, it will be as clear as fire that South Korea has attained an undeniably favorable position economically and militarily. Thus, any military maneuvers are due to the realization by Kim Il-sung's party that the opportunity to achieve their goal through polarization by military means will be eliminated forever and they want to prevent this from happening before it is too late. From now until one or two years later there is a possibility that North Korea in a desperate effort will choose military adventure reason. Further, any news or information of deterioration and chaos in South Korea, Korean politics can only serve as an explosive to hinder the commencement of the Seoul Olympics. The establishment of the National Federation Movement for the Unification of North and South comes at a very historical and important time. Uh, now is 3, 4, uh, 5.44. We're now on page 3.59. That ends our Hunduke and we started today at 3.55 with Section 1, National Federation for the Unification of North and South. So is there any reflections or any inspiration from the reading that we have today? Yes, anyone? Hey, Francis, this is Randy. Good morning. Yes, good morning, Randy. Remember, 
Yes, uh, thank you, Randy. Anybody else wants to share about our reading today? Thank you, Ron Oliver. Anybody else? So what struck me the most was for the uh, communists to deny the existence of God. And they did already 70 years in Russia, in the former USSR. So that magazine from France Ro Figaro estimated 150 million people died because of communism. And similarly in other communist countries like Vietnam, a lot of people died also. Millions were called bold people because of their view that, you know, God does not exist and humans are just above the animals. We are just like a higher form of living uh, being and even compared to a machine. So that's the result of uh, a communistic uh, point of view and their ideology. And if you can see even South Korea, which believes in God, and there's freedom. It's number 20 and number 12 in you know world trading at the time. I think it's even much higher now, and that's because people have freedom, and they believe in God and religion. So it's very striking and very inspiring that those countries that believe in God are more prosperous and are really 
you know, exercising their human rights to compared to a communist state where it's the state who owns everything and you don't own any property at all. So that's all I can say and uh, is there any more reflections or inspirations? Okay, if there's none, let's all rise and have unison prayer. Our most beloved heavenly parents, our Lord, we pray that today, Friday, is not only a beautiful day with the sun up there, but it's also cold, we pray that more and more people would embrace religion and embrace our true parents and embrace also the unification movement. We pray that in Korea itself, we pray that they will unite to have more dealings with North Korea as it is happening right now if there's a mutual coexistence, they are even having been benefiting a lot for the unified factors that they play in Pamunjon and also now that they are trying to connect relatives who lost they take their loved ones to communism and even going south. We pray that they can connect with their old relatives and friends and eventually this will lead to the outpouring of support for the unification of North and South Korea. We pray our heavenly parents that they can always sit together in one table and really think about the unification of North and South Korea. We pray that in our own way we can contribute to the unification of North Korea which will also bring unification throughout the world and prosperity and we pray that we can always unite our mind and body and we can control all our wins and the prices and everything and we pray that we can really have this opportunity again every day to correct many things that we have made wrong in this lifetime and we pray with your help our heavenly parents we can really bring about the heaven here on earth Chungil Guk with all our brothers and sisters and we can always have this heavenly world that many men and all the sages have been longing for and we pray again and we congratulate our two parents for establishing this national Federation of the Unification of North and South, which was yearned also by their countrymen. And we pray that as it comes to pass, we pray for their unification as one country under God and will be one world under God and the cosmos and all under God. And we pray all this in all our names and in my name, Athanasius Francis Sikatalan, blessed and of times, our Jew, our Jew, our Jew. The scene of the Tungil Unification Song. Uri so
Good morning to you, our beloved true parents of heaven and earth and human kind. Good morning to the true children, and good morning to all our brothers and sisters. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Have a great and wonderful Friday.